bit by bit, I'm going to show periictal and postictal changes. And a seizure surely shakes things up. And you cannot expect imaging in the postictal phase to be normal. We concluded the previous brain bit by bit with a case of a 77 year old woman with seizures originating from her left hemisphere with hyperperfusion on her CT and she also had an MRI in the acute phase demonstrating diffusion abnormalities in her left hippocampus. And edema and diffusion abnormalities is something we often see after a seizure, especially in the hippocampus and mesial temporal lobe. The edema and swelling can be very extensive, for example in this case of a 77 year old male with post-stroke epilepsy and he had a post-ictal left-sided paresis and on imaging you can see extensive swelling and edema in his left hemisphere and eight days later the paresis had decreased and you can see the expected atrophy in his right hemisphere. The edema and swelling is caused by the glutamate leading to cellular edema, which is called excitotoxic edema. And there's also some edema between the blades of the myelin, and this is called intramyelinic edema. So it's not located in the axons themselves, and there are no inflammatory responses on histology. And this excitotoxic edema has been mentioned in the brain bit by bit on amygdala enlargement in the differential diagnosis. Besides the local cortical changes, you can also see remote white matter changes in the post-ictal phase, such as diffusion abnormalities in the splenium of the corpus callosum, also related to the glutamate as explained in the brain bit by bit on reversible splenial lesion syndrome. Sometimes you can see leptomeningeal enhancement in the post-ictal phase and this is related to problems with the blood-brain barrier and this is a very illustrative example of a nine-year-old boy who had had a viral encephalitis at the age of two on imaging, there was only some residual gliosis in the periventricular region. And there were, uh, from a clinical point of view, um, was epilepsy post-encephalitis. And after a seizure, they did an MRI with extensive leptomeningeal enhancement. And half a year later, the leptomeningeal enhancement had disappeared. And this... Leptomeningeal enhancement is also related to the glutamate release because this influences the tight junctions between the endothelial cells and the blood-brain barrier. So there's leakage of the blood-brain barrier and therefore the leptomeningeal enhancement. And this leakage of the blood-brain barrier has also been demonstrated in a very nice study in 2018. And they looked at 23 patients who were hospitalized for surgery and they did an MRI um, in the interictal phase with gadolinium. And they also administered gadolinium in the ictal period. And they did an MRI at that time point as well. And um, when they compared the T1 of the ictal versus the interictal MRI, you could see that there was leakage of gadolinium during the seizures, but not in the interictual period, in the location of the epileptogenic zone. You can have very extensive imaging abnormalities in the post-ictal and periictal period. Um, and in this case, it was so extensive that even an encephalitis was considered, but all the perineoplastic autoantibodies and the infective screen were negative. And they changed the anticonvulsant therapy of this patient and two weeks later the MR had returned to normal. 
And from a clinical point of view, uh, I often get the question, how do you know if the edema and swelling is post-ictal or if there is an underlying tumor or other pathology? And there was a very nice study in European Radiology 2013, and they looked at a series of patients with um, post-ictal changes, and they did follow-up MRI, and the reversibility was between 15 and 150 days with an average of 62 days. So as a rule of thumb, I advise to repeat the MRI six to eight weeks after the patient has become seizure free. Maybe not all the uh, imaging abnormalities have normalized, but you should be able to see some change. Sometimes the seizure doesn't terminate and then there's a status epilepticus that we will discuss in the next frame bit by bit. I hope you do stay tuned.